gentlemen, and uh, welcome back to another episode of The Trade Take. Last week was football, and now we move on to the women's side as we are here with Edinburgh women's head coach, Coach Cal Wheeler. Coach, I uh, really appreciate you taking the time and uh, joining, on, joining us on this podcast. Thank you so much for having us, Trey. Really appreciate everything you're doing for Edinburgh Athletics. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, Coach, let's just jump right into it. You know, we are in a – a big pickle here with uh, COVID-19 putting a, lot, a big damper on a lot of things. And, you know, as you, uh, you're a family woman and, you know, you have a family yourself, kind of what precautions have you, you yourself and what have you, what precautions have you taken as a family, you know, during this pandemic? Well, it's been a, a roller coaster ride, Trey, I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, starting back in March, um, or my family and I were, we were very shaken up by, you know, everything that was going on in the world. And we took a lot of precautions, you know, um, fortunately enough for me, I was able to stay home with my kids once they, um, weren't able to go back to school. My husband continued to work every single day, which was kind of scary in the beginning because, um, you know, when you have a working parent that's going in and out of the home with in the middle of a pandemic, you know, you fear that parent's going to be the one that brings the virus home. Um, so in the beginning of this, you know, we were really shooken up about it. We only went out if we really had to. Um, the weather wasn't really nice, so we couldn't really get outside much. So, you know, I learned a lot um, from an eight-year-old and a six-year-old as far as YouTube and um, PlayStation 4. Um, so that was interesting, but you know, we wear masks everywhere we go. We social distance six feet as much as we can, uh, wash our hands. Um, you know, back in March when this all went down and we realized how serious it was, Dan and I, my husband and I sat down the kids and we had a conversation with them and, you know, just to try to explain to them what was happening because the world was changing and our everyday life was going to look very different. Mm -hmm. And like you said, uh, you, you were home with your kids more often. And, you know, during quarantine, you usually don't get to have, or um, excuse me, during the season, it's kind of hard to spend time with your kids with, you know, coaching and practice and even recruiting. And, you know, that had to feel good just during quarantine, being able to spend more time with your two kids. Absolutely. I'm a silver lining type of person. So, you know, I believe everything happens for a reason and you have to find the good in, in every situation. And, the blessing that I was able to endure was I got to spend a lot of time with my two kids and, you know, it, it really put perspective in my life as to how we were living such a hectic, chaotic life and we were missing out on things. I was missing out on things and it really changed my perspective and slowed things down and made me realize that, you know, my daughter's only going to be nine for so long. My um, son's only going to be six for so long. And I just really took the time and cherished every moment I had with them. And like I said, we, um, we grew stronger as a family. And I think that it is a blessing that I got so much time to spend with them. That's gr That's glad to hear. And I, you know, I hope you guys stay safe and, you know, moving over to the basketball perspective of this, you're in your third season as head coach right now. And, how do you keep yourself and your coaching staff, you know, mentally prepared and physically prepared for a, se a possible season this spring? Um, this has definitely been an extremely difficult preseason for us. Mm -hmm. um, definitely a circumstance I've never been in in my 13 years of coaching. So it's all new. But I think with that comes a lot of conversations, you know, with my staff and with the players and really trying to make sure everybody's on the same page and what we're working towards, you know, we're trying to see the silver lining in this, you know, one thing I'm really emphasizing is their academics. So for the freshmen, they're getting a good start on um, their first semester and really in taking all this time they have to, um, invest into their academics. The one thing I, I really, um, trying to set a goal for my players is let's come out of this semester with a really good team GPA so that when we go into second semester and hopefully, you know, we're playing, we're practicing, whatever that looks like, you know, they can balance their time and um, have a good foundation academically if they perform well in the classroom this semester. Good, good. That's good to hear. And it's great to have team goals and, you know, 
going into your players, as you talked about, you lose three players to graduation. And, you know, everybody knows Michaela Barnes, but Bridget Schaefer and Shania Sharp were really big assets to your team this past season. How do you replace the production those three brought to your team? Well, I don't think you ever replace players um, entirely. Uh, Bridget, Shania, obviously Michaela had a huge impact on our performance and our success last year. In saying that, um, I don't think that we'll ever replace everything entirely that they did. But I'm really excited about the returners that are returning. And we have a young incoming freshman class that's very talented and two transfers that I'm really excited about in Jillian Fisher and Paula Martinez. Um, so I think that will look a lot different. I think obviously given our circumstances where we're not in the gym and able to evaluate our team as a whole, we're going to have to play different. You know, we're not going to be able to play like we did last year. I think there's going to be a lot of, you know, different strategies that are going to come into play with a short amount of time to train and getting on the court. So, um, I'm excited about it. I think we've, have a great group, great energy. Um, you know, every time we're on Zoom calls, we, we really haven't had everybody in the same building yet. Um, everything is via Zoom or FaceTime or, you know, email, text messages, but the energy is there. And that's what's most important to me. Um, I think this is a hardworking group that once they're given the opportunity, they're going to compete every day and make each other better. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you know, you have a very, very, very talented underclassmen group. And, you know, just a few names, your freshman of the year, Rana Elusani and Monica Brown. What do they have to do to keep that mind, the winning mindset coming into this next season? Even though, like we know a couple schools, you know, up, uh, up in Erie are practicing. We can't practice right now. How do you keep them uh, with the winning mindset? Um, well, I think it's just that, Trey. I think it's a mindset. You know what I mean? Um, we have a rich tradition here at Edinburgh, and I think that every kid that puts on that uniform understands that we have a winning mindset. When you come here, the expectation is to win conference championships and even a national championship. Even given our circumstances, you know, we don't have the facilities that some of these other schools have. And right now, we're not training like other schools are excuse me, allowed to, but that's something that I feel like Edinburgh is used to. And that's what makes us the blue collar type of athlete here at Edinburgh um, department wide. So I, I think it's something we're definitely used to being at a disadvantage, but it's a mindset. So coming into this, like I said, first and foremost, we're focusing on academics. Uh, secondly, obviously it's accountability. Um, more than ever, they have to hold themselves accountable individually which is, is something that I like. It's a, it's a good challenge. And I think moving forward, that's something that we really need to grow our program with. Um, I am really excited about Rana. Um, I think that she had an outstanding summer. Um, she's a gym rat. She's always in the gym. Yesterday, she texted me, Edinburgh um, basketball outdoor courts are getting worked on and she just needed a hoop. Right. You know, um, so I think she's coming in with a great mindset. She had a great freshman year, mm -hmm. which she worked for, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't given to her. She just didn't slide in and take on that role. She worked hard. Mm -hmm. She competed. She learned and she grew tremendously. And I think it was well deserved that she was freshman of the year. So I'm really mm -hmm. excited about her stepping into a leadership role as well. Um, on the other side, Monica Brown, you know, she had a great um, breakout season last year. And, and she does something that, you know, most um, players aren't willing to do. And that's defense. I mean, she's the excellent defender. She's probably one of the top defensive players in the league. And, you know, she's been working on growing her offensive side of the game, but I think that she's going to bring that energy, especially on the defensive end. And, you know, that's how Edinburgh women's basketball wins championships is with that defensive mentality. So I think Monica is going to slide into another leadership role for us um, uh, in the 2021 season. Well, I just have, you know, one more question for you, Coach. Don't want to take too much of your time. But, you know, like you said, you have a great underclass coming in. You know, you have a lot of great weapons coming back for you. You know, what's the goal for Coach Callie Wheeler basketball team this come or come this spring? Um, come this spring, the goal, obviously, for us always is to win a championship. Mm -hmm. But I think with this year, Trey, we're going to have to take it one day at a time. Mm -hmm. um, with so much uncertainty in the world and so much unknown, 
Um, every day is changing. So I think this, the word that we talk about a lot in our meetings is adaptability, being willing to adapt. And I think last year's team, um, the returners are going to bring that to this year's team because there were so many times where we had to adapt on the fly, whether it was a back-to-back -back, um, crossover game and we completely changed up our strategy and how we were going to play or whether it was, hey, we're going to switch up the defense in the game on the fly and they were willing to adapt. So that's something that I'm really excited for them to incorporate into this year's team. Um, but really building that chemistry now so that when we get on the court in, in the spring, we're just picking right up and, and kind of flowing with it. But it's, it's always our goal to win a conference championship. I'm not sure how many games we're going to get to play, so I can't really put a number on, you know, how many games we want to play. But we want to be one of the top defensive teams in the league and, you know, have some all-conference players, if not all-Americans. Well, Coach, uh, you know, you look, you sound like you have a lot of great plans and you have your team heading in the right direction. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to be on this podcast. I know it had to be over Zoom, but uh, I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thanks, Train. I really appreciate you and everything you do for Edinburgh Athletics. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Guys, that is Coach Callie Wheeler, head coach of the women's basketball team. Thanks, Coach.